Hi everyone, welcome back to Gold Fries. I've purchased this AMD Ryzen 5 7600 just before the Chinese New Year and during my holidays I actually tested it out and I can tell you I absolutely love the Ryzen 5 7600. Now this video will be pretty long and I'll be referring to my notes here. So let's begin. You know, if you remember one of my videos I mentioned about wanting to get the 7700 instead for the 8 cores and 16 threads. But how did I end up with the 7600? Well, there are two reasons. The first reason being that the, the things I do on my PC, nowadays it's not that uh, CPU core intensive. Yes, I have a 5900X. However, uh, the guys at Three Dots, which is a distribution company, they managed to hook me up with the DaVinci Resolve Studio, so I'm able to use GPU acceleration. So the CPU is not that much of use now with that many cores and threads. So if I were to uh, change from an AM4 to an AM5 system, then going for 8 core 16 threads, well, I could actually just go with a 6 and 12. That comes to reason number two reason number two being the price now the 7600 retails at a little over rm1000 while the 7700x retails at a little over 1500 so when you consider that it's paying 50 percent more just to get 33 percent extra cores with a bit of the additional speed which i felt does not justify my purchase so that's why i went with the 7600 now moving on, let's look at this. Um, let's uh, go into the details on that I'll be covering into in this video. Um, we'll go with um, what I'm going to be doing. I'll be comparing the 7600 with the 7700X and also also the Intel Core i5-13600K, both which are. I just better show you that I have a device here. Or if not, it looks like I'm looking at something empty down here. Is it? So yeah, all of these. Will be using DDR5 and they are cooled by Deep Cool's 360mm AIO, which are the LT720 for the Intel system and the LS720 for the AMD system. Don't worry about it because these two uh, coolers, while well, the model number is um, a bit different, the performance is pretty much the same. So, we'll have a review on that will come in later. Now, the boards are the ASRock Z690 Tai Chi for the Intel, Intel, this uh, DDR5 system. Oh, I forgot to mention that I actually will include the DDR4 system, which I did in the previous video. So that one will be using the ASRock B660 MPG Riptide. As for the AMD system, I'll be using the B650 Pro RS. And for the Intel system, the memory is using an XPG Lancer DDR5 6000 MHz kit. And then for the um, AMD setup, is using the PNY Maco with Expo on it and all systems are running on Windows 11 with the latest updates and all. And up next, um, I'm happy to inform that um, I really managed to overclock it. Yeah, I always do overclock, especially with the AMD ones. On the 7600 here, I did a 5.5 gigahertz overclock and I'm very pleased with the result. It's so much faster than relying on just PBO. And in the end, I settled with 5.2 gigahertz of which I will um, 5.2 is still higher than the maximum boost clock which AMD rated at 5.1 GHz for this CPU model and that part, I will talk about it a little uh, much later after we go through the benchmarks and all that. And with that done, let's go into the benchmarks right now. Starting with Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the 13600K tops the chart when paired with the 7600 showing literally the same performance as the 7700X regardless how I tune it. In Dirt 5, the 7600 seems to do better than the 7700X as well, matching the Intel Core i5-13600K. The, the 7600, regardless of speed, is very close, so it's a matter of slight runtime difference. In Assassin's Creed Valhalla, the numbers are identical, and oddly enough, the Intel test shows the same number among the setup, and the AMD test shows the same number among the AMD setup itself. The PR performance is literally the same, pretty much runtime differences, but the coincidence is something I cannot explain. In Far Cry 6, the Intel DDR5 system takes the lead by far, while the 7600 on stock has the lowest number. Overclocking it will get it close to the 7700X, so what I feel that it's the core count that's holding back the 7600. 
For Ghost Recon Breakpoint, both the 13600K DDR5 and the 7700X have matching results. The 7600 is initially behind them, but it takes the lead when overclocked to 5.5 GHz, and settling at the 5.2 GHz gives it a sweet spot. In the Division 2, the numbers are identical, though I'm not sure how the 5.2 GHz overclock has the higher number, but safe to say they are all acceptable as runtime variants. Lastly, in Watch Dogs Legion, the AMD system takes a slight lead while the performance is pretty much the same. The AMD Ryzen 5 7600 does come with a stock cooler. That's why the box is this big. It is the Wraith Stealth Cooler. I went on to see how it fares, and it turns out all things look very good. Slight differences here and there, but the one to two higher frames from stock cooler results seem to be runtime variances, with the temperature peaking at 87 degrees Celsius in my lab, which is around 37 to 38 degrees Celsius. So the temperature levels is actually very good, considering this is the stock cooler. For multi core workload, using stock cooler will see it hit 4.7 GHz running at 95 degrees Celsius with the Cinebench R23 score at 13,770. With proper cooling, it hits 5.05 GHz all cores, 83 degrees Celsius on load, and the score is much higher at 14,730, which is a slightly higher score than the 14,501 score from the Ryzen 7 5800X3D that has more cores. Now, back to the overclocking part, I did 5.5 GHz with 1.2 V core, and in Cinebench R23, the score was a lot higher at 15,864 and the temperature just maxed out at 75.5 degrees Celsius with the Deepcool LS720. I settled with a 5.2 GHz overclock instead because I managed to run it at just 1 V. Yes, 1.0 V on the V core. So at this voltage, it's so low that the score is still respectable at 14,869. But the temperature is below 60 degrees Celsius. Yep, running Cinebench R23, and I saw the peak temperature is 57.6. So this is unbelievably low for a 6 core trial track CPU overclocked to 5.2 GHz. Because I remember like my Ryzen 5 3600, I ran it at 4.5. It was a golden sample, I guess. So 4.5 GHz at 1.2, 1.25 V core. It was very good back then. And even so, the temperature was very high, it's like the 80, 80 degrees Celsius range. So I'm really impressed by this 7600 here, which I feel is the excellent choice that I can put on my um, small form factor setup, which is currently my work rig that's using a 5900X with a 240mm EIO and slim fan. The temperatures can get really high. So yes, looks like the 7600 would be a good choice for me and I can't wait to place it in that system. All in all, the 7600, like the 7600X, works great out of the box, in fact, great out of the box, pardon me for being tongue tight. So um, yeah, it, both of them work great, but I find that the 7600 is of a greater value, and they both will work even better after tuning. So if you are not tuning the, this, the, the, the Ryzen 7000 series CPU, you are missing out quite a lot actually. So the best part is that the 7600 here retails at a far lower price point at a little bit over 1000 Malaysian ringgit, which is about what 220 US, I guess. So yeah, and paired with, I've done some tests as you've seen how even with the affordable setup, it's actually pretty good. So if you are aiming for an affordable affordable board like the B650M PG Rip type and then pair it with a um, State, let's say affordable 5200 MHz memory, well, it's actually a very good gaming setup and with a B650 board, it can last you a long time considering that it's new and AMD claims that you will be supporting, uh, they will be supporting this platform for a long time. Well, whew, lengthy video for this one. So that's it for this one. The 7600 is right now my favorite CPU for 2023 and I can't wait to see what other things are to be released this year. Well, I'm pretty confident that this will be um, my favorite CPU for the whole year. And let's see which which one of them will actually be able to prove me wrong when it comes to Q4. All right, that's it for this one. Thank you for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Do remember to subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And bye-bye.